Here we are right now in the transaction code SQ01 and for example if we try to execute one SAP query to show the output then we can see the output but there is also a possibility to add ABAP code and this is being done in the info set itself so to do this we open up the SQ02 transaction code and within here you have to specify your info set either select it in the list or type it in manually and then you change to the change mode so you click on this button and then in this little button in the toolbar code there you can add ABAP code on your own. So you can add your own logic to your SAP query. So normally SAP query ABAP code is not needed but here you have the availability or the, the possibility. So you can click on this and then you will jump to the code tab and then you can specify different code sections. And if you would like to add ABAP code, then first of all, you have to select the code section and that you would like to add your ABAP code. So for example, the free code, and then within here, you can add your ABAP code. You can do uh, syntax check, you can save your code. You can also use patterns and you can use the pretty printer. And there are a lot of code sections and I would like to explain them to you in more detail. So data here you can declare your global variables. The variables declared in this section are available in all other code sections. Start of selection. Before the database accesses start, the code in this section is executed. This section is mainly relevant for data retrieval. Record processing. For info sets without a logical database, all join tables are accessed. You can compare this section of code with the get code in the info set. End of selection before list. This ABAP code is used before the list output. Here it is particularly suitable for changing the internal data stru structure percent %g00 in order to influence the output. So it is mainly relevant for aggregated calculations and actions. End of selection after list. This ABAP code is used after the list output. Here it is also suitable for changing the internal data structure, again percent %g00 to influence the output. So it is mainly relevant for aggregated calculations and actions. Top of page, this code section is executed when the SAP user starts a new page. At selection screen, this code section triggers the ABAP code before the output on the selection screen. Here you can specify the field for which the event should be triggered in the delimiters tab. Free code, this code under this event is executed after all events have been triggered. So this is the section of code that will be executed last. Initialization. This section is used to initialize variables with an initial value. And last but not least, add selection screen output. This code section triggers the ABAP code before output to the selection screen. So let's make an example. In this example, I would like to change the output. So basically for this, I have prepared an ABAP code. I will paste it in. So basically here I have some variables that I need later on. And as mentioned here, you have the ability to check the code here, no syntax error font. And if you want to, you can also use the pretty printer. So to format the source code. So, and then I will save my code and then I need an additional ABAP code in the end of selection after list. So to change the output and for this, as mentioned, I have prepared one ABAP code. So basically, yeah, what is this code currently doing? I think as mentioned, this is really important. The percent %g00, this is an internal table for the output where the output is saved. So if you would like to make any changes in the output, then 
then you have to use this output and to do this here I am saving this string and I'd like to assign this string to this field symbol to be able to use it later on and in this case so for example I am assigning a column to the output echo minus Ebeln in this case and so yeah if I scroll down a little bit then I'm signing uh, this this column to the field symbol once again and here if there is any output so if the G00 uh, internal table is assigned then I will loop over the output and then I will assign um, the, the component of the Ebeln to the structure and we, I think I tried to make it a little bit bigger, okay, not, not possible right now. Um, I try to save it to the value, to the field symbol of the value of the Ebeln, so the purchase order number. And here it's important to know that here directly you have the value of this, of this field about the purchase order number and then you can make any changes right now. Um, yeah, for example, if you would do, I think it doesn't make sense, but it is possible to make something like this. So, for example, if you would like to change it to any value and that there is no uh, syntax error right now, you can also do it a pretty printer. Um, yeah, this is, this is one way how you can do this. If you want to, you can also uh, delete a current line. So, therefore, you have to use the delete and then you have to use this assignment to delete the, the current line within the output. So basically you can surround with any if or else condition that you like to. And yeah, for example, if you would like to insert any value, then this is this is also possible. So basically here right now we, we are changing the value. So and let's try this out. But of course I have to delete this because I would like to, to see the output. So then I would like to save it and generate the info set and then open up the SAP query, execute it and here you can see that I have changed the output. For some reasons, um, you can also, as mentioned, delete. You have other possibilities to do. So let's make another example. So to do this, we go once again to the SQ02, go into change, into coding. And within data, I have prepared another code. So basically here the string for the columns and the, the output. So yeah, I would like to save this. Then I will go to end of selection after list. Then I will do this. So basically once again, I'm getting the, the output. So with this statement, then if there is any output, then I will first sort it and then I will delete the duplicates so i will do a syntax check save this generate the info set and then let's execute the sap query once again there should be shouldn't be any duplicates uh, yeah but if there would be any then there would no duplicates be shown and um, yeah as we we saw um there are nice ways how you can add alloc code within sap queries um, if you like this video, hit the like button, add a comment and do not forget to subscribe this YouTube channel to never miss great upcoming videos. Thank you very much and then see you in the next video.